So university partnerships, um, we work with universities in a variety of different ways. We welcome individual students onto our program from, I think we've had students participate from over 400 and 70, maybe 500 at this point universities. Um, and we're willing to work with any student interested and, and motivated to engage with our programs on an individual level. In my role at the Green Program, I work with our university partners and relationships, which looks like a lot of different things, although with the similar motivation of bringing the Green Program in to really innovate their portfolio of global programs, having a program that's focused on sustainability to developing that leadership and the sustainable development goals engagement, again, across any and all majors, we're seeing increasing interest from um, any people anywhere from the political science school to the business school and everywhere in between. Um, of course, we also work with a lot of different study abroad offices to add our programs as um, a partner in a variety of different models. So what do those models look like? What does it mean to be a university partner? Uh, I would we would split it into four different categories. So one way that you could be a university partner is to just be an affiliate partner. Um, that would mean that your campus pre-approves the green program. You become familiar with the model, with the programs. Perhaps you've pre-approved the credit. We can work with you on developing credit for your students. We have a lot of proactive reporting before, during, and after the program on what your students are doing. You'll have a very direct point of contact for support at the Green Program. We're able to develop group pricing and discounts for you and faculty members should they become involved. Um, lots of support and risk management on site again, and we're able to report back to you anything that happens on site immediately to work with your parents as well. And then we're also to support, we're also here to support um, getting the word out on your campus. I, I've worked previously at a study abroad office and I know how understaffed and busy all of you can be and I'm here to be the extension of your office and to support you with the development of marketing materials, um, content descriptions of the program, hosting events, co-hosting events, whatever you need from us. We're here to really support the um, launching and the marketing and the advising that goes into any program. So that would be an affiliate partner, a faculty-led partner, for example, Amy, who I'm going to pass it off to shortly. Um, they function in a lot of different ways, and um, the general idea is that any faculty from any different department is able to take the core of the Green Program and use that as a way to enhance the course and the course outcomes that they want for their students. So we'll have faculty that work with us um, and go to the program. We also have a lot of faculty members who work very closely with us to um, provide our program to their students, but they don't always travel to the location. They might hang back, um, but it can look like a lot of different things. It has all the benefits of an affiliate partner, all of that risk management, the on-site support, a lot of the enrollment support, the advising, um, that all comes into the faculty-led component but we're able to work with you to figure out what is needed for your classroom and, and add our program component to that. Similarly, the embedded course is also something that is developed in partnership with a lot of different university partners, um, specifically though faculty members and, and people in different academic departments. Um, what the embedded course looks like, you know, especially since we're a short-term program that can fit into the winter break or the spring break, um, or the Maymaster even, we'll have a lot of faculty members um, like we do at the engineering school at NC State who will have a semester long course that they teach to their campus. And then there'll be a Maymaster global component or a spring break global component where as part of their semester long course for credit at NC State, um, students go abroad with the Green Program to get that hands-on experience in a global context. That's something that we're seeing increasing requests for, actually. Um, it's become a really popular way to enhance a semester-long course at your campus. Um, you can see uh, our case study on the side here with Haley Sankey from Penn State University. She's in the College of Earth and Mineral Sciences. She teaches as part of their World Campus virtual instruction program as well. And she actually won an award for uh, the program that she developed with us in this embedded course approach where she has 
her virtual program talking about earth and mineral sciences, talking about um, the environment that students are participating at Penn State. And then she has students, they're actually able to choose whether they'll take their global component with us in Iceland or Peru as part of that credit. Um, and then another model for partnering with the Green Program, we're always open to ideas. If you don't see anything here that you think um, would be really interesting or a good way for us to collaborate, by all means, we're always open to hear what that might look like. Um, but some specific examples of our innovation partners would be uh, joint master's degrees. So we work with the Antioch University of New England. Um, we developed, we co-developed with them a comprehensive master's course. It's a virtual course um, where students are taken abroad to three different program locations throughout the master's program. Um, and so we'll, their faculty will teach the course and then in between their semesters, they're doing, it's sticking in a different green program location experience. Um, another uh, innovation uh, project that we have in the works is professional certification programs. Um, we work and we host a lot of young professionals who are welcome to join the program. Um, and so that's another innovation uh, partnership that we're happy to look into with university or corporate partners. Um, again, I'm sure there's a lot of questions. Stick them into the chat bar. We'll get to them at the end. But with no further ado, I'm gonna pass the mic over to Amy Long now to talk about her partnership program with us in Iceland. Okay, hello everybody. Um, I know we are running out of time, so I'm gonna try to keep this as short as possible, but I'm also a talker, so forgive me ahead of time. Um, so just to give you a quick background, I mentioned in the chat that I am um, faculty at UNC Wilmington in the Environmental Sciences Department. Um, like that faculty-led option and the embedded options that Megan just spoke about, um, I have so far been doing faculty-led um, groups. So this image is my, my first crew, my 2017 crew. It was 15 students total plus a grad student. Um, we had a fantastic time. Um, so that what I've been doing, and you can go ahead and advance. Can I advance, Megan, or do you have to advance? Thank you. Go ahead, you, you can go to the next slide. Um, and then this is my crew from last summer. This is my 2019 crew. It was just seven of us that year, um, but I'll get to that in a second. So for my faculty-led classes, I know there was a question in the chat earlier about faculty and staff being able to go. The answer is yes. Um, I'm getting older. I don't know how much my students want me there anymore, but, <laughs> but I want to be there, um, especially because I've changed what my faculty-led program looks like. Um, every time I've gone, uh, I was supposed to offer one for the winter trip, but our university has stopped all um, study abroad through that time period. So hopefully next winter, if not um, January may or may not happen, but I think we're, I think we're behind the eight ball on January. But um, so just to give you an example of what my faculty led programs look like, I first found out about the green program through a poster in our hallway and they were advertising the, the sustainable energy component that used to be the primary and only focus of, of the Iceland program. And since then it's morphed to a total sustainability sort of look, looking at tourism, um, energy and, and other sustainability initiatives. Um, but so when I contacted um, Melissa and others at TGP, they had an opportunity to take some faculty on kind of a mini five-day sightseeing expedition where we integrated into one of the student-led groups so that we could see how it worked. I'd never taken students abroad before. Um, so I, I, I first got to go on a faculty professional development sort of opportunity that I would, I, I've been trying to do the same for Peru and the timing just never works right for me. Um, but so that's how I first saw it was in 2016. And so I then, with the help of Melissa's um, staff, I was able to say, okay, I want to offer this for my students, but I wanna go there for two and a half weeks. I wanna piggyback 
off of your program and build my expertise and my interests around that. Um, and so that's what I did in 2017. I built two or three days on in the beginning with my students and we focused, I'm a restoration ecologist. So we focused primarily on ecology and geology of the country. Um, and then we joined in for the, the nine to 10 day um, TGP program. And then we wrapped up with another, like th I think it was another three days of my own programming. We got to that way add on my expertise where my, my faculty led course focused on restoration. So I know there was a question about reforestation efforts in Iceland. That was my big selling point is we get to be the Lorax in Iceland. How cool is that? Um, and so you'll see a couple pictures from that in a moment. But before I show you that one, you can go ahead and advance for me, Megan, or did you, did you tell me that you didn't let me do that? Thank you. Um, so before I get to like my, my love of TGP, um, I love TGP how it's just designed in the first place. So this is an example. This is looking at the big um, geothermal power plant that powers Reykjavik and provides their hot water. The, the, as an environmental scientist, many of you seem to be engineers. Maybe you have access like this to facilities already that I just, as a restoration ecologist, I didn't know was there. Um, but as a restoration ecologist and environmental science students, integrated in, we're just blown away with the amount of access we get on these site tours. Um, I didn't include a picture, I wish I had, of getting down under the hydro power plants and seeing the water rushing in. Um, you can always tell the engineers from the environmental science people with who gets like, oh my gosh, this is insane. Um, but for me, this was amazing. But the access is unparalleled. You can go ahead and click the next one. Thank you. So we get to see a lot of um, sites, so geothermal power plants, hydropower plants. Um, the, the, that's the main focus that I've been for my two trips I've gone with our students. Those have been the two that we've really focused on. We've seen the wind turbines, but unfortunately, uh, in 2017, we weren't able to stop there because the weather just wasn't good. Um, but then there's the adventure travel component, right? And that's one of the beauties of TGP, in my opinion, is that they, every single thing that's done is done with such intention and such level of detail. And students think, oh, we're just going on this wonderful hike, and isn't it great to be out on these glaciers and these lava fields and land that is literally only 10 years old? Um, and, and they're they're weaving this love affair of the students with the with the environment, whether it's Iceland or Peru or Japan, um, and and everything on their programs are led by um, native people. So our Iceland tour people, our TGP staff, and this phenomenal adventure travel company that they partner with. Um, so there was a question about safety and and things like that. I can tell you in Iceland. You're, you're with the most well-trained, it's well beyond first responders because of the, the training that they all go through in Iceland. I've never felt so safe in such an unstable environment in my life. We were literally going to hike um, glacial volcanoes and it's exhilarating and you think of all the what if something happens, um, but you also know that you're in the best hands in the world and the students just have an amazing experience. So the, the adventure travel side, there was a quote that Megan read earlier about how the TG, TGP program does such a phenomenal job integrating personal challenge and team building, and that is so very true. Like in my 2019 crew, I had one student who's an advisee of mine, I love her to death, very high anxiety, student um, and she almost didn't come she almost stopped several things and on this glacier hike in particular I just remember the exhilaration on her face going I don't believe I just did this I never thought I'd be able to do this and just seeing the empowerment that the the team talking her through getting up that glacier um, that's it just makes it all that much 
that much more wonderful. Okay, next slide, please. So this brings me to my faculty-led components that TGP has been just miraculous with working with me on. So as an environmental scientist, it's very cross-disciplinary. I have the ability to change what I'm teaching based off of the news. That's why I like doing these faculty-led where I build my own program dates either before or after their existing programs. And so what you see here on the left is uh, my one student, Colin, from last summer. Our students in that particular small group of seven had, we have a very, we're, we're an ocean, an ocean side um, campus. So we had a lot of fisheries interest in our group. And so my focus, instead of restoration ecology, um, like it was with my first group, ended up being more like sustainable fishing, um, and sustainable ecotourism built around their coastal systems. So on my own private days, I was able to get um, a sightseeing and fishing trip done. We actually did that as a large group in 2017, just a whale watching expedition. So TGP was, is phenomenal with working with me within their program, if possible. Um, it's not always possible, but Melissa's team has been great with saying, okay, Amy, what's your wish list? What they're always trying to perfect and, and increase the impact of the program. Um, so you take my, my own ability to program my own days and integrate that. This other image of students walking is with the TGP experience. It's, it's seamless. Um, my students were concerned that we were on the ground for several days before they integrated into the big group and they were concerned that they would get clicky and they wouldn't be able to integrate into a larger group. Um, it didn't happen. Like two of those students are mine and two aren't. They, they integrate right in. The melding of the engineering students with the business students, with the education students and the environmental students just works beautifully, especially in that group capstone program. Um, next slide, please. So this is just another, some of my favorite um, pictures from my 2017 crew. So this is an example of giving ideas to the TGP team as to what you want to get out of a faculty-led program. This is when I said, I really want, I really want to plant trees. I know they're doing reforestation efforts. I want to plant trees. And Melissa and the team were like, that's such a fantastic idea. Do you mind if we incorporate it into the entire TGP program and not just your extra days? And so that's what they did. Um, and that kind of helped spur this idea of, of every trip when possible should have some sort of community engagement focus like this. So here we are being the Lorax, planting um, birch and fir trees on a lava field. Um, so I, every time I go back to Iceland, I hope to see those little guys getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But that was a memorable experience that all 15 of my students and the entire TGP students, I'm sure, will remember. Next slide, please. And then this was also that same year, 2017. I, I was restoration heavy because it is my focus. This was um, just my group. We continued our restoration ecology focus by volunteering with, with, with an organization that's basically like the Sierra Club. And so we were removing, you might be able to see this purple flower. It's Alaskan lupin. It's horribly invasive in Iceland. There's a lot of controversy about it, but this particular organization the largest one in the country is actively trying to remove it from edges of protected um, areas. So we spent a day, um, our, only, our only cloudy day that year, removing Lupin. Next slide, please. I've got two more slides after this one. I had to include this one because although it doesn't give you the typical diet and food experience of Iceland, it's by far almost all of our favorite places to go. And it's a greenhouse. It's a completely self-contained greenhouse where they grow mostly tomatoes and cucumbers, um, their herbs, etc. And you have the most heavenly bowl of tomato soup you've ever had in your life. Um, I can tell you their secret ingredient. They put mango chutney in it. 
I'm allergic to mango, so they make me my own special bowl every time I go. <laughs> um, so TGP is in charge of making sure those sorts of things happen. It's just a little glimpse as to how personalized and um, on top of everything TGP is and their partners in country. This particular idea is so, um, so incredible to my EVS students that I've actually got a student from that 2017 group who has actively been trying to recreate this here back in North Carolina. So I, he checked in with me about four months ago. He had a piece of property that he was actively trying to purchase and, and develop himself. So again, that idea of those capstone projects being truly meaningful, they are. Uh, many of them do go on to actually implement them. Um, and having access to talking to the people themselves that are responsible for these industries and these um, technologies and whatever it is, is truly unparalleled in my opinion. Okay, last two are just pretty shots. Um, I am, like I said, an ecologist. I love plants. So <laughs> whether it's like the grand, huge um, landscapes of glaciers and volcanoes down to the minute, tiny flowers of, um, of all of these great little organisms you see, it's just, it was a beautiful experience. I find something new every time. This plant's on the right. I, I'm going to blank on its name right now, but... I first saw and learned about this plant in Iceland. I took a trip with my family to Nova Scotia last summer, and I found this plant in Nova Scotia, and it just blew my mind. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like Iceland in, in Nova Scotia. So it's kind of cool. And then my last one, just to finish. Um, this is, I, Megan and Melissa kind of laughed at me earlier because I sent them a bunch of pictures. I was like, I can't cull them down to five. I sent her like 19 and I think four of them had people jumping, but it's because we're so excited and everything is that wow factor. Um, again, whether it's integrated into the big TGP programs or working with your own students, piggybacking onto their program, it's been a remarkable experience and um, I, I look forward to working with TGP forever as long as I can. So I hope that gives you some insight. I know there's probably lots of questions. Um, to answer, Alexa has a question about cost. It does change every year because of what we do and we don't do. Um, the one thing I didn't even mention is that TGP is, it, it, they themselves, totally built my 2017 class for me based off of my wish list. Um, in 2019, I was, because it was my third time in country, I was able to do a little few things on my own, but still relied very heavily on their expertise and their connections and their recommendations. Um, I, and I can't, the, I know my small group was actually like a thousand dollars less than my large group. But I think we also did a heck of a lot more with my, my 2017 group. Um, the way my program runs and my university runs, my two week to two and a half week class is normally about between 1,000 to 1,500 more than what the TGP program price is. So. Thanks, Amy. Um, just to piggyback on that quickly, I know that we're already at one o'clock, but there's a few questions that came in that we didn't get to, and I just want to address them quickly before wrapping up and saying thank you. So for um, the price, it varies by location because everything is included, like accommodation, transport in countries from Japan to Peru to Iceland to Nepal. It does vary a bit, but each of the program locations will hover around $4,000 for the program. Um, and again, it, it will vary a bit depending on program components. If you want to add additional components as a faculty member, that'll that'll fluctuate the price a bit as well. Um, there was a question about health and safety. So this is paramount in our minds for all of the programs. It's we have staff on site and not just academic partners, but local partners like Amy, um, Amy mentioned our partners in Iceland, um, who are the national response team. Um, and when they're not the TGP response team for any disasters. So really well-trained partners in each location who are there to um, assist in the case of any 
unfortunate scenario that could arise. And we also do a lot of comprehensive vetting of each of our community partners. And we have staff um, who are there to cook meals, adjust meals, take into account any pre-existing medical or health conditions and accommodations that students need. Um, and for health and safety, we do have a manual outlining everything that we do on that front that I'd be happy to send if you want to follow up to me after and, and just request that. Um, and I think we had another question about uh, working with community college students. Yes, we, we definitely work with community college students and are happy to explore how we can adapt um, to your credit model and bring our programs to your campus. But we have lots of students come to us from community colleges eager to explore um, sustainable development goals abroad. And that's something that we're definitely able to do and would love to talk about more. Um, and I'm sorry that we don't have time for any more questions. Um, I want to be respectful of the rest of your day and, and leave you now, but uh, for any questions and to connect afterward, I do encourage you to reach out. Um, you can find me just at Megan at thegreenprogram.com and I'll follow up. We'll have a recording of this and lots of links and additional material uh, that we'll be happy to send your way. So uh, without further ado, thank you everybody for attending and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.